Okay, so the first thing we need to do in Excel is we need to actually add a data analysis tool pack. So when you open Excel, you're going to go to File, and then you come down to Options, and then over here you're going to click on Add-ins, and then there's the Analysis Tool Pack. You're going to click on that, and uh, we'll click Go, and we just we'll just take the Analysis Tool Pack. Um, that's yeah, that's good enough. Click OK, and it's going to add it to it, and so then. Um, under data over here now we have this data analysis tab and we're going to have to use this to be able to make a histogram so that's the first thing we have to do is add that tool pack it doesn't come packaged with excel automatically you have to go and you have to add it in this data analysis tool pack under the data tab you have to be able to add that in so that we can make history. I'm going to show you how to use um, excel to calculate all of the things that you don't want to do by hand um, for your wooden cube. So the first thing you have to do is uh, make a column here. I made a column here in B of the width uh, in inches of your uh, 27 cubes. And we went out to the uh, thousands place. You notice a couple of them don't uh, go out all that way. So what you can do is you can highlight them. So pause this video whenever you need to. So you need to get your data in there first. So you can come up and uh, let's see, where is it on this one? Um, right here these little buttons right here if you click them whoops I went over too far if you click those you can actually make it all kind of justified there and have the correct uh, the zeros in there so it'll be in there okay um, so what I'm gonna do here in this column A is I'm gonna actually number all of my cubes so uh, hopefully you numbered your cubes so you know which ones fall outside of a um, a certain range that you'll probably want to replace with cubes that uh, fit inside it so um, I'm going to do cube number right here, and I'm going to just number all these. So I'm going to start here with one, and then I go down two. And Excel is really smart; it knows what we're trying to do. So if I highlight both of those, and then I come down to the little uh, corner here, so it's a skinny plus sign, I grab it and I drag it all the way down. It'll go ahead and number it, auto number it for me. So I got cube one through uh, 27. Okay. We want to do a lot of uh, stats on these things. So I'm going to kind of do a, a label here, and then we'll do the stats here in column F. Well, I'll come over here. It's column D. So uh, we're going to want the mean. Um, we're going to want the mode. Uh, we're going to want uh, the median. Um, we're going to want standard deviation. And we're going to use the sample instead of the population. We could do the population, too, if you want. I can show you how to do that. Um, we're going to get uh, the minimum value, we're going to get the maximum value in our data, uh, we're going to get the range between the minimum and the maximum, um, and then we're going to get um, uh, mean uh, uh, plus um, two, uh, I'll just call it S, two sigma, that's two standard deviations, and then we want the mean uh, minus two standard deviations. What we want, why we want that is because in a normal distribution, um, if you remember the, if you've learned about the empirical rule yet, uh, seventy percent of everything in a normal distribution will be between plus one and minus one uh, standard deviation above and below the mean. Ninety-five percent will be within plus two and minus two standard deviations above and below the mean. And so um, we want everything to be, we want all of our cubes to be within a, a range that's going to be plus and minus two standard deviations above and below the mean. So we're going to try to see which ones are not that and we're going to replace them with um, other cubes. Okay, so that's how we're going to get all of those. So now all we have to do, and you could calculate these uh, normally by hand. In fact, you probably should to gain experience on that. And then you come in here and you'll um, be able to really appreciate Excel and what it can do for you. Okay, so here I'm going to get the mean. So we have to do these with formulas, and they always start with an equal sign. And then I can start typing in uh, average, probably. There it is, average. And so a function is going to come up. I'm going to click average, double click it. And then I come here and I'm going to highlight my data and click return. And so it figured out my average, my mean. Okay, for mode, I'm going to do equals, M-O-D, there's uh, 
mode. We'll go ahead and use this one down here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. Return. That gives me my mode. Um, I'm going to go ahead and highlight all these cells here and come up here and click the little thing there so it comes out nice and neat. By the way, if you have a multimodal or a bimodal, or you basically have, like if you had two of 0 0.750 and you had two of 0 0.748, that's a multimodal or uh, you have multiple modes. There is a way to actually do that um, and, and have it print out all of your modes. Um, if you want to know how to do that, uh, come and talk to me. It's not as easy, so we're going to skip it right now. Okay, median equals MEDI, there it is, median. I'll come here and I'll highlight everything and return. You got my median. My median happens, happens to be the same as my mode. Standard deviation equals ST, and there's a couple standard deviations here. This one, P, is population. That's remember divided by N, and sample, which is what we're going to use, is divided by N minus 1. We're going to go ahead and use the um, that one there instead, the sample. I'm going to highlight all that and return and boom, there's your standard deviation. So it's really, really simple to do that. Okay. Um, in fact, let's, let's get a little bit more than that 0 .04. So let's highlight all these here and let's go, let's go out like that. So we get some more digits in there. Okay, minimum equals min. There it is. All these are just functions in Excel. Max equals max. Whoops. Equals max. Highlight all those. Return. There's my maximum. Range will be from the max, min to the max. Now there is not, you can try it, equals R A N. There is no range. So what you have to do is you just have to take your maximum value. So I do equals. I click on the maximum value, and then I do minus, and there's the bell, and minimum, and return, and so there's my range. Okay. How do I get my mean plus two standard deviations? Okay, so I'm going to do equals. I come up here and I hit the mean uh, plus. I'm going to do two, and then time sign is the star, the asterisk. 2 times the standard deviation, which is right there, and I hit return. So that's mean plus 2 times the standard deviation. This one I want mean equals, get the mean, minus 2 times standard deviation is right there, return, and I have mean minus 2 standard deviation. Okay, so that's all the kind of the data I need. and. Um, so basically, we want to find any cubes that are above or below uh, these numbers. So 0 0.74318 all the way up to 0 0.758298. And we want everything to be within those two. So anything that's above that or below this, we kind of want to throw out and uh, replace so that our puzzle cubes kind of fit together better to make a better puzzle. Um, so one way to do that real quickly, I'll just show you a little bit extra with Excel. I can highlight this uh, column. And we can come up to uh, make sure you're on home. And then over here on conditional formatting, okay, um, I'm going to go to highlight cells rules. And I'm going to go to more rules. And uh, if you look down here, I'm going to take, okay, format only cells with the cell value. And there's greater than, there's a whole bunch. Uh, and what I want is not between. I'm going to highlight every cube here that's not between these two values right here. So I'm going to click the not between. That gives me two things. So I'm going to click on this little symbol here, and that will shrink that up. And I'm going to come here, and I'm going to grab the, the I guess, the minimum, mean minus. I'm going to hit that one. Click the symbol again so it comes back out. Click this symbol and grab that right there. So now what's this going to do? It's going to take the, it's going to format cells in this column with a cell value that's not between this and this, this and this. Okay, now how do I want to, I want to highlight it. Well, I'll click the format and let's uh, click on fill. Make sure it's fill. You can do other things too, border or whatever, but I'm just going to do fill and I'm going to highlight it yellow. So if it's not between those two, it's going to highlight it yellow. Click OK. And so I'm going to save that rule. And there we go. I got, I had two of them. This one and this one are uh, too big. They're outside of mean plus two. So I'm going to go take cube eight and cube 16 
put them back in the box and I'm going to find uh, two cubes that have that are less than 0.758 and greater than 0.743 and, and replace those. That's what I would like to do. Okay, last thing we need to do is we need to um, add a histogram of these things, a frequency of how often these uh, various things showed up. Um, and we can do that because we already, if you go to data, you should have the data analysis button right here. And that's because we added the tool pack. If you didn't add the tool pack, you need to make sure you've done that so that this shows up. So the first thing I have to do is I have to actually uh, set up some bins. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say, okay, let's set up some bins here. And how do I want to do that? Well, I want to start my lowest bin. I want to have my min value equals, um, you know, it just equals right here. I can grab that min value and put that in there. Okay, and then I want to go all the way up to the max value, and I want to have like uh, 10 different bins. I want to have 10 bins. So, so what I can do is I can do, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say interval. I'm going to make an interval. And the interval is going to be my range from my min to my max. That's my range. I'm going to divide my range by 10. So I'm going to take equals range, divide by 10. So I get an interval here. So I want to go start with my min. My first bin is my min. And I want to add on. So I'm going to do right here, I'm going to do equals this cell um, plus um, this interval. And I'm going to drag this down so that it always adds that interval on as it keeps going down. So to do that, though, I'm going to have to come in here and I need to put a dollar sign in front of a number because when I drag this down, it would also try to drag this interval down and it would try to add it to, so right now it's adding it to E14, but if I drag this down, it would try to add it to E15 and then E16 and, e, and I don't want that. I want that number to stay the same. I want it to be always E14. So I do that with dollar sign to make it a static thing. Hit return and then I can grab this and I can start dragging down and uh, I need to drag down until I get up to my maximum 0.76 which was right there. So I'm going to shrink this back up right there. So there's my, there's my bins. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's going to give me 11 bins. That's okay. So I'm, I, I took my, just to review that, I took my range, I divided it by uh, 10 to get an interval here. Then I put my minimum right here and I just added that interval on every single time, all the way down until I got up to my maximum. So now I have my bin set up, I can go ahead and use my data analysis. You got to get the bin set up first. Okay, so I'm going to click on data analysis. And there's a whole bunch of things here to do. I'm going to click on the histogram. I'm going to click OK. And there's a whole bunch of crazy things here. So the input range is all of my data. So I'm going to click input range. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to highlight all of my wooden cubes. And then I'm going to get my bin range. So I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to highlight my bins Okay, that I want to put the data into. And then output range, where do I want to put the output? I'm going to click that and I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to, I'm just going to highlight a whole bunch of cells here. I don't know if I need that many or not, but I'm just going to make sure I have enough. And then what you want to do is you want to come down here and you got to make sure you have chart output clicked on. We're going to output a chart. Okay. And click OK. There we go. I made a histogram. I can bring that histogram down here and kind of make it bigger. I can click on this frequency. I don't really need that. I'll delete that. Um, down here, I want to change this label. So I'm going to come down here and highlight that. And I would do something like uh, um, length inches. OK. Um, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to come up here. I'll do the, let's change the title. Um, wooden cube side lengths, something like that. Okay, And you'll see the frequency that I have in, in, of every kind of cube and all the bins. So I kind of have a pretty good normal distribution here. It's kind of like a bell curve, right? Uh, I got two here, see? These two here look like they're kind of outliers. They're outside the norm. I got a better bell curve, bell curve if I could just have this. And of course, those were, remember, these, those were these two up here. They were, you know, they were too big. So we're going to try to take those out and get two that are actually within this, within my plus and minus two standard deviations. So um, I want, because I want 
95% of those to be within that. Okay, um, good. And you can uh, come here and you can play with the formatting of this table and make it look really pretty and colorful and stuff like that also.